I'm gonna do a video response here uh, about some of the baits I use primarily for bass fishing but other predatory fish will take these baits I've also caught pike and walleye and, and other fish like that on these uh, it's in response to a scouse angler who I seen the other day using uh, a small bladed jig he was fishing for perch it was a small silver jig I think it was an eagle claw jig he said uh, and he was fishing it in front of a small soft plastic minnow and uh, he was catching fish on it and it worked really well and I had told him about a jig that I had on a minnow which is this it's a, a plastic blade the blade is see-through it's not metal uh, so it doesn't give off shine but it does give off vibration uh, the weight is attached directly to the blade so when you cast it if you want to drop it it will actually drop straight down straight to the bottom then you can uh, jig it so you would bring it up and then it will go straight back down bring it up and then it will go straight back down but the blade imparts vibration onto this the swim bait here you can see it's sectioned so as the, the bait is moving through the water it's swimming but it's also putting out a lot of vibration almost like a spinner bait blade uh, now you can get this in various sizes this is made by a company called striking you can get different color minnows for it. I mean, this is a white one. Uh, white is a pretty good universal color to use because a lot of the bay fish are white or silver. Uh, where I, at least where I fish, you can get green. I have another one here that's a chartreuse, which is like a bright yellow. This is really good for smallmouth or good for darker water, like dirty water. This is a little bit more visible than the white. Uh, all it does is thread on to the hook pretty stout hook of course for largemouth bass even a smallmouth bass would you know have no problem taking that uh, works really well cast pretty good too it's pretty weedless because the blade that the line would anchor here to the front and the blade stays over the hook so you can pretty much bring it through some pretty decent weed and the, the blade pushes the weed out of the way uh, it doesn't get hung up too too often but works really well Now some of the other bladed jigs I have here, I'll start with the small one. These are chatter baits. This is a, a, a jig head with the metal blade on the front and the blade is curved. So it, it puts out a lot of vibration. You can actually feel it, especially if you're using braid, you can feel the whole rod vibrate uh, when this is coming through the water. It puts off a lot of vibration. Of course you get it in different sizes. This one has no trailer, it's just a regular white skirt. This is the same bait in blue and black. Bigger blade, more vibration, bigger profile. This is using a twin tail trailer. So those legs will kick up and down and put off more vibration. There's another one in white. It's This is like a, a chartreuse shad color. And I have it rigged with a curly tail. So the, the tail has a swimming action to it. And these are bigger profile baits. So it, it's imitating a bigger bait fish. And this one has a gold blade, which gives off a lot of flash, even more so than silver. So again, it, the the gold blade would be work well in, in dingy water or poor visibility water. Now, something I haven't seen them using in in Europe or in you in the UK uh, are are jigs like this that are made for the American market for the bass. Uh, this is a swim jig. This is a, a a Greg Hackney a heavy cover jig. This one would imitate a bluegill. And I have it trailered with uh, what's called a devil spear. This is actually a soft plastic bait that I'm using as a trailer. But it swims in the water. As you can see, the tail is segmented. So it, this is a swim jig. It's almost used like a swim bait. It gives a profile of a fish. Uh, but you can also fish it like a regular jig. Jigs are used to fish around heavy structure like timber or trees, sunken bush, uh, anything, you know, any type of heavy cover where the fish is going to be laying in wait for ambush. Uh, a bass is an ambush feeder. So they have a tendency to hide in cover like a pike and then come out and attack their prey when it, when it comes past them. Uh, a lot of times jigs are used to fish vertically. This one of course is a swim jig so you would use it like a swim bait. You would use it exactly like a swim bait. Uh, cast and retrieve at any depth. Uh, you can see this has a really heavy hook. Uh, this is actually a tuna hook. 
so that hook will never bend and you can you know you can hook into a large fish and get it out of heavy cover really really quickly this is a bottom jig uh, this is a regular jig I have it trailered with uh, a Berkeley pit boss which imitates a crawfish uh, you can see that the skirt changes color too in the light a little bit. It goes from green to blue, which are crawfish molting colors. Uh, this is what this bait is made to imitate a crawfish. So you would fish it on the bottom. And you would either drag it or you make short hops with it on the bottom. Or you would drag it across the bottom and then you know put up a dirt trail. And the fish would home in on that dirt trail. A lot of times you get bites on jigs. When you cast the jig, especially if you're casting it to cover like a submerged tree or a tree stump or something of that effect, uh, you would cast the bait in and it would drop vertically straight down. And the fish will actually hit it on the drop. Now these little trailers will flutter on the way down. You know, they swim in the water and they may put off a lot of vibration and movement. Uh, but it's a reaction type bait. So he, he, he's not even thinking about biting it. It's just it comes past his face and he instinctively attacks it uh, there's no feeding response or anything like that it's just an instinctive act but it's pretty successful as you can see there's lots of different colors a lot of them are made to imitate crawfish this is red and black again the molting you know crawfish colors it's got a little craw flappers on it this one also has a rattle so for dark water it's got a lighter skirt, you notice this is a thinner skirt, so it doesn't have quite as big a profile. This would be another swim jig. It's made to imitate a shad, of course, with this chartreuse, the white and the gray back. It imitates you know, a lot of different types of bait fish. Uh, this has a swim, a regular swim bait body that I put on it, on the hook, to give it a little more bulk, but it also has a little paddle tail. But the, you notice the head, the shape of the head is different. This is a real slimline head. Uh, again, it's a swim jig. You'd use it like a swim bait. Just to cast and retrieve through open water. And some cover too. You could ring it past reed beds and stuff too. It, it's got the weed guard on it. Which is just like heavy nylon. So when the fish bites it, the weed guard goes down and exposes the hook. Here's another swim bait I rigged uh, with a curly tail. As you can see, it's, it gives off a, sm a smaller profile. This, this is a thinner skirt. The, the thin head uh, still has the weed guard. This is a flipping jig for fishing heavy cover. You see it's got a big heavy brush guard on it again. This is another Greg Hackney uh, striking hack attack jig. It's got a big heavy hook. This hook is designed not to straighten out. And um, you get lighter wire hooks and you, you get a five pound or six pound bass and he bites this and he, you need to get him out of that tree, you know, that submerged tree. Wherever this hook touches, that's where it's going to penetrate his mouth. It won't tear his mouth or, you know, uh, tear it through his skin. This just goes straight in wherever you set the hook and uh, you'll be able to power that fish out or whatever you need to get him out of. And it won't bend. Again, this is a, a crawfish trailer pumpkin seed crawfish trailer you can see this the, oh, this is a bigger profile bait it imitates a big bait it can imitate a, a fish or a crawdaddy if you're fishing on the bottom but this is made for flipping into heavy cover getting fish out of heavy structure this is a newer style this is a crimped tail this is made by jackal it's a spade jig uh, but the shape of the head it's shaped like a spade it's made for fishing on the bottom or bottom hopping. Uh, this is a tungsten weight. It's not like the other ones I have here are lead. Again, it has the brush guard. And I have it with a little uh, Berkeley Havoc twin tail, a grub trailer. But this would imitate a crawdaddy or small bait fish. These are really good jigs. It has a smaller head. This is a half ounce because uh, the tungsten is much lighter the than the lead. The tungsten is so denser than the lead. Profile. Therefore, it can be smaller for the same weight. That works. They work really well. This jig here is a bottom fishing jig again. This is made for a rocky bottom because it has a, a head shaped like a football or a rugby ball depending on what side of the world you live on. Uh, this is again a craw trailer on it. It's got a pack of craw on it. 
and it's in you know crawfish type colors. Uh, so you would bottom hop this, you would jig it on the bottom so that it would jump up and down. Uh, also, they would hit it on the fall if you're flipping it into structure, but the the head prevents it from getting stuck in the bottom when you're dragging it along the bottom. Uh, some of the round head jigs have a tendency to get stuck in rock, but the, the football shaped head like this is much harder to stick in the rock. It has a tendency to want to walk over stuff, uh, but it, again, it works really well. You can see it's got a red hook in it for a bleeding bait hook. They have all sorts of trailers you can put on these jigs. These are regular soft plastic baits. This is a, a Berkeley Havoc grass pig. Uh, it's a small swim bait. And you can use it to tip a, a jig. You can put it on the back of a jig like I had on that swim bait earlier. This would be a twin tail, a curly tail grub. You can use this as a standalone bait or as a jig trailer or a spinner bait trailer. This is one of my favorite baits. This is a, uh, a Berkeley Pit Boss. Again, this is a chunk bait. It's short. The, the, the full size bait would be a little bit longer than that. Uh, again, it imitates a crawfish, but you can swim it too. These little fe uh, the feelers on it for the, the crawfish feelers would, would imitate a uh, you know a vibration in the water like a, a swimming fish, just the same. Uh, they come in different colors. I have a green one here. They come in all sorts of different colors, uh, but these are these are specifically designed for jig trailers because they're short. Again, the, the full size bait of this is a little bit longer. It's about that that much longer and that would be to use as a flipping bait which is for a different technique as you can see you can get really small they're not all giant you get smaller ones as well uh, this is white to imitate a bait fish again with the red for the bleeding bait the red hook gives off that red flash in the water uh, you know it simulates a wounded fish as you can see jigs can be made to imitate a lot of different things that the, the bass would eat uh, all different colors all different phases all different sizes so you can go from really heavy like this would be a one ounce this is pretty heavy for fishing deep water 25 30 feet down and you can get, go all the way up to a half ounce or smaller heads like this much much lighter you can also make your own jigs. Uh, you would basically start out with a jig head of whatever size that you would want. Uh, this is just a basic jig. You get your skirt. Again, you can get tons of different skirts, different colors, different types. You can get regular. This is a hoop skirt. You can get straight skirts that you would fan out. So when you would put it on, it would it would spread out. All you would have to do is feed the hook through, get your skirt straight, feed the hook through the center, mount it up on the bait, and then you turn a regular jig into a skirted jig, and then you can put whatever type of trailer you want on this. Uh, or no trailer at all. You can fish it either way, depending on how big of a profile you want to present to the fish. As you can see, these skirts come in all sorts of different colors. This would imitate the, the orange and the green and molten crawfish. Also the red and black, depending on the region you're fishing. Uh, this can imitate a molten craw or a craw that's uh, you know setting a shell up. If they're just like crabs, they molt their, their shell. They can, the shell doesn't grow. They have to shed their shell, and when they shed their shell, they get soft, and that's when the fish really like to eat them. Uh, when they don't have to deal with the hard shell. But I'm sure any. I'm sure these baits too would work for. I mean, these baits will will catch pike. No problem. Uh, the smaller versions will be good for perch, uh, and they would you would catch multiple size perch. Of course, the perch has a big mouth, so uh, he would have no problem handling that. But yeah, jigs are 
very effective baits very effective baits and they're pretty cheap they're not they're not that expensive to purchase uh, some of them can be the tungsten can be kind of pricey but you know you can buy the components yourself and make up your own jigs no problem and they do catch fish and if you ask anybody that fishes for bass they're gonna have some of these baits in their boat they're very very popular Okay, this here is a perfect spot for using a jig. Uh, you can see right here where this, the tree is submerged in the water, right here where you've got open holes in the hydrilla in the weeds. Uh, you got a little patch of lily pads here, and then you got an open hole here uh, or in here under the, where the branches are here. Uh, any of those spots would be good for a jig. It's pretty thick cover, but. What you would do is pitch the jig into this. Now I'm fishing from the shore, but if you encountered something like this in a boat, you could also fish it from a boat. But I'm going to show you what I'm talking about and how you how to use it. Now, ideally, what you want to do is pitch the jig so it doesn't make a lot of noise when it hits the water. So just pop it in real soft. Let it sink. A slack line. Put your finger on the line so you can feel it. Fish bumps it on the way down. So pull it right up back out of hydrilla. Just like that. Ooh, a soft entry into the water, let it go down in the gap in the weed or by the lily pads where you think the fish is going to be sitting underneath it. Let it hit the bottom, jig it up. Hit the bottom, jig it up. Back out to the hydrilla again. Chris, it takes some practice. You always want to keep your finger on the line in case it fish it hits it on the way down. You want to put it in the water soft just in case there's a fish sitting under where you cast. If it comes right down in front of his face, he's going to come out and whack it instinctively. This is really thick weed here. There's, there's layers of hydrilla, the water is low. Just like that. Pop it right in that empty spot, the gap in the weed. A lot of times that's where the bass is gonna, or a pike, is gonna sit next to. He's waiting for something to eat. A pass that he can ambush it. What you want to do is hold the bait in your hand. You hold the bait in your hand and then have a rod length to line out and you can pitch it like a pendulum so you just swing the bait forward and let it swing out into where you want to put it. You're not actually casting it, you're not side casting it or underarm casting it. This will be considered pitching. You can also do this with soft plastics. So you want to just let it fall in the water in a very little splash. So when it comes past him, he's gonna hit it right away. He'll just zoom out from under those lilies and grab it. You can see I have a little, real, real short trace, just in case the pike or the pickerel grab it. <laughs> Ordinarily, if you were just fishing with, for bass, you wouldn't use a trace. And that is how you would fish a jig. I'm gonna give you a rundown on the equipment of what I was using uh, to fish with the jig. This is uh, a Daiwa Laguna. It's a carbon fiber rod. Uh, it's seven foot one. Uh, you like to use a little bit longer rod for the jig, especially if I'm pitching with it. it gives you a little bit better castability and control. Uh, this is a high speed baitcaster reel. This is a KVD uh, 6.3 to one gear ratio on it. Uh, it also has a flipping option on it. You can turn the little switch on it and it, you can use the, the thumb switch to turn the bait caster on and off. Uh, 
we're using a jackal spade jig and green pumpkin and a bright pepper grass green and then I had a twin tail trailer on it just a little two leg trailer curly tail trailer so this jig is nice and compact you can put it into pretty small spaces it's got the brush guard on it so it covers the hook so you don't get hooked up and then of course that falls out of the way when the fish goes to bite it I'm using a 25 pound braid all the way I have a short a real real short little trace on it just in case I get hit by a pickerel or a pike uh, but usually I would fish this just with the just with the braid tied directly to the the, the jig uh, this setup seems to work really well you can get longer longer poles uh, especially if you're going to be pitching heavy baits or heavy jigs you, you know an eight foot pole would probably be better this is uh, a medium heavy action with a fast tip uh, you want the fast tip for your casting accuracy uh, it, it enables you to roll cast it a little easier and it gives you better control and it also allows you to get that real soft entry you want uh, and not you know plop the, the, the bait down in the water and the idea behind that is that you want to be able to not spook the fish if there's a fish laying right where you cast uh, you don't want to spook them but it's pretty effective and it works really well catches lots of fish